We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We come into thy sanctuary that you may cover us by your spirit. For we dwell in perilous times and we ask that you help us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Can we can we pray for sister? The things I saw while you minister, is you have a strong praise and worship ministry. Very strong. Can we bless her? Can we just release? You have a very strong praise and worship ministry. Can you just bless her and ask that the hand of God might rest upon her life that she will grow from strength to strength in the service of the Lord creating an atmosphere to the grace that is upon her life to facilitate the delivery of the word of God the delivery of the dividends of redemption that the grace upon her life will create this passageway let it be stronger let it let it let it yet be higher. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name. We place the blessings of the Lord upon you. That you will increase in this ministry. In Jesus' name. All your songs you sang. And when you change the songs. You change at the right time. I didn't know you as a praise and worship. Uh, all right. Ephesians chapter 6, we are going to continue our Bible study. Uh, as we attempt to continue, we would like to get a few feedbacks, just in case we have feedbacks from yesterday night to today morning. Some disclosures, some feedbacks uh, that we got. Hallelujah. Some disclosures and some feedbacks. If we have feedbacks, we would like to get a few feedbacks. Because when you begin to pray, then it begins to teach you. It teaches your hands and it teaches your fingers. Hallelujah. Anybody got a feedback? Any feedback? Okay, we have one feedback here. We have three feedbacks. All right, so we're going to work with these three feedbacks. Can we get extract a microphone so that we can get a little feedback before we proceed? So let's extract a feedback from Pastor George. Pastor George. Pastor George. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last night uh, when I went home and as I was praying, as I began to pray. I prayed, I prayed for a while. All of a sudden, I felt in this my right arm here from the back, as if somebody was forcing a knife through it with sharp pain. And it kept on. I kept pressing. It kept on. I kept pressing until uh, I I I, I finish uh, my prayer time. The pain moved from the hand like this, came to the finger. It came at a point that my fingers were becoming becoming numb, sort of. Okay. And from this side also. I could see, feel some pain. And as I slept, I woke up. As I slept, I saw in my dream that my, me and my wife, a lady came to take us to a place. And actually, this place was, was supposed to be a, 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 a place where people will be given wealth. And when we, get, when we got there, I saw some. Uh, uh, some some uh, like cupboards or maybe like boxes made of wood the man that that was doing that, that was giving the people wealth we put them inside the box and do some incantations we put them inside the box and do some incantations and come uh, and, and bring them out so when when we got there I saw, I, I saw what he was doing then I, I told my wife to come out because she was inside one of the box I said come out and I asked the man are you a herbalist? he said yes that is a herbalist I said is it, is it, is it true this means you make people he said yes I told my wife come let's go and I woke up 
Now, um, what you experience, what you have is a revelatory disclosure. You know, the other time we spoke about um, the difference between an inspiration and a revelation. There are two broad ways that God speaks. You can break the broad ways into sub into subsections. But there are two broad ways by which God speaks. God speaks either by inspiration or by revelation. If God speaks by inspiration, uh, inspiration, what will make you know that you are dealing with an inspiration is that inspiration brings to your remembrance things that you have heard before, things that God has told you before, things that, messages that have been preached before that you heard. Inspiration will reach back into the archives and it will bring it uh, forth. Now, that's what we call, it reveals the present revelation position of the spirit. It is not something new, but it is something current in the spirit. So it, it brings it back to your remembrance. So the key word, if we are dealing with an inspiration, is remembrance. Is that clear? But if we are dealing with a revelation, what a revelation is, is that it takes you beyond what you have in your memory. It is beyond what you have in your data bank, in your knowledge bank, in your wisdom bank. Because you don't have adequate insight to contend with the situations that seek to bedevil you. So what God does is that he brings you into revelation. It's an outright disclosure. It's a shift in the paradigm. It's a change in your scope of oppression. So what you experience is a revelation. The only thing is that you did not spend time to pray for the interpretation of your revelation. So you don't have a weapon yet. You don't have a weapon yet. You, you have a vision, but you don't have a weapon. Is when you now labor in prayer and there is interpretation to your disclosures, it becomes what? And without a weapon, you cannot fight. So many of you like seeing visions. But the reason why God gives visions is not to entertain. They are strategic arsenals from heaven's kingdom that is given to mortal men to give them the capacity to engage the realm of the spirit at various levels. Are you with me? And you must, you must be patient to the place of prayer to translate those visions because the visions came at a thought frequency that is superior to your human thought faculty, human thought capacity. So when you press into God, the spirit that brought the revelation is going to now give you the wisdom to understand its meaning. And that's what we call the spirit of wisdom. There are two things. The spirit that brought, the anointing that brought the revelation is called the spirit of revelation. The anointing that we interpret it is called the spirit of wisdom. If you check your Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, you will find Paul talking about praying for the church that the Lord might grant unto every believer in the efficient church the spirit of what? Of wisdom and what? And revelation in the knowledge of God. So, what he, he, is, he has experienced is the spirit of revelation. He still needs to stumble upon the spirit of wisdom. Then he can now use this revelation as a veritable tool to secure victory in the realm of the spirit. From what you just saw, I don't want to interpret for you. I have the interpretation, but go and label, go and label, go and label, go and label, go and label. Hallelujah. Because you see, your wife is in a certain bondage. It's in a certain bondage. And you were brought to see the bondage. And you see, for, for most of you that are not married, I need to tell you a few things. Are you with me? There was a time in my own practice of marriage, my, in my own experience. All right? Those days I was working in Lagos. And you know, when I was working in Lagos, I come back home like three days. I come for contact. I run back. So I don't stay home for long. Okay? But these three days, two days that I come, me and my wife must worry. Something about it. There is a challenge. There is a problem. Are you with me? I say, are you with me? And you will not know what the problem is until you have a revelation, a disclosure. So I now discovered when I checked the pattern, it was so consistent. It means it's something that is stronger than the will of man, stronger than the intelligence of man. Are you still following? 
So I decided to go launch a search. And the base is the platform that we conduct searches in the spirit. Is that the spirit of God searches all things. So the spirit of God searches more than Google. Google search. Searches more than Yahoo search. And the spirit of God can even search even up to the deep things of God. It means that the things of the devil are shallow. You can search that one even and add to you even if you don't pray you can search it but if you are going to search into the deep things of god like the will of god for your life the purpose of god for your life you need to go deep in the search and the spirit of god still has the capacity so i began to launch a a search and i found out that my marriage was under attack i was praying for married people doing all kinds of stuff and my own was what under attack but i did not know until there was a disclosure it took me beyond my intellect, it took me beyond my wisdom and then he showed me a reality. And when I brought it to the notice of my wife and we prayed about it casually, it ended. In fact, I've, I've been looking for Kore because we have been too peaceful for a very long time. So, so I've been trying to engineer some. <laughs> so go and labor, go and labor. Go and labor. But I will not interpret what you saw, but it's a weapon, it's supposed to. You're supposed to. Your prayers and the reason why you felt that pain. You see, are you with me? You know, we said the other day that you cast out devils, but you wrestle with princes, with principalities. You wrestle. And you see, this wrestling, the, the Greek word used for wrestling, most of you used to watch WW something. So you, you will jam. So, so I need to inform you that in warfare, sometimes they are jamming. You will feel physical pain sometimes. But it's not so that you can be troubled. The physical pain will not last. <laughs> so that's, that's jamming. It's part of the jamming. And uh, as you were, you collided with something. When you collided, the thing you collided with in the dream that you now had, the revelation of the thing, it was about you were actually fighting for a particular bondage that was on your wife. And let me stop there. Yes, um, we need feedback. So when you begin to pray, the Holy Spirit now steps in and he begins to teach your hands to fight. And what? Your fingers to work. And most of you that are not yet married, you will not even know. When you get married, warfare goes to another level. Yeah, another level. Another level. It goes to another level. The warfare around a single person this is quite straightforward. You can interpret it quite accurately. But when you come into marriage, the field of warfare expands. So your spiritual capacity so also is supposed to expand in commensurate measure so that you can handle the things at that level. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, next feedback. We had a hand here. Okay. We had. Don't joke. You have something have something. I just discovered it today. And I wanted to know if it is true. That's why I left and went to the office so that I will not see anybody physically. The flame was still burning. It's not a normal... Yes, I'm not talking about the voice. The voice is good, but I'm talking about what is traveling with the voice. It's, it's, um, it's significant. So, I think you should give attention to it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, um, last night, I went home. I was struggling to pray and, and sleep. And sleep. Yeah. I was very Amen. tired. I was like, Holy Spirit, help me by 11.30 or 11 there about so that I can wake up and start the prayers. Now, let me advise. This is an advice. All right. It's a commentary. If you notice that you are struggling with prayer and sleep, pray first. Pray first, sleep later. Don't say, let me sleep. And, uh, the time, the time when prayer is most difficult to pray, those are the times where the greatest battles are won. How many of you have ever had this experience? Maybe, probably while you were on campus, there's a schedule for fellowship, all right? You know it's Thursday evening or Sunday evening or something. And one of those days, you didn't feel like going to fellowship. You just, by an act of your will, you forced yourself to go to fellowship. And 
you were so blessed that day. I mean, or prayer meeting or something like that. It has happened to you. Now, you see, sometimes when things open up in the spirit, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, they are aware that it has opened. But you do not know. And then you now have to pay the price to pass the last test. Most of the time, the last test is, is in that argument. Should I go with the prayer or go with the sleep? Hmm? So let me advise. Always put the prayer later. Put the sleep what? Later. Go for the prayer. That's the easiest way to stumble on spiritual breakthrough. You know why? Um, you see, worship is not in view if you don't have a choice. God did not create us as robots. So he gave us the power of choice. So I choose not to serve the devil. I choose to serve God. So I have worshipped because I had an option that I decided to discard in order to choose the Lord. Do you understand that? So if there is no choice in view, there is no worship in view. So there are two things struggling for your attention. Prayer and sleep. Uh, wisdom demands that sleep later. Pray now. Right? If you if you carry if you work with that principle, you will never miss your spiritual season. See, recently I entered into another spiritual season. I thought I was a good teacher. Until the Holy Spirit now visited me and said, Okay, I'll give you another measure. Another measure. All this conference I preached, I didn't open my Bible. If I stand to teach, the way the thing comes, I hear what I say before I say it. It's like a stream. If I face any scripture, that's in my mind, I want interpretation for Revelation chapter as I'm thinking of it. See, I entered into this new measure not too long ago. And it was this kind of don't postpone your breakthrough. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yes. So while I was struggling, I, I, I prayed to a point I slept off while I was praying. So I, I just had a dream. I was. I, I need to explain. I need to explain that. Uh, you know, we spoke about um, visions. I don't know if it's here. We spoke about visions. We have what is called um, a trance. In a trance. Okay, you know what night vision is? That's dream. And then, what a trance is? What a trance is? In a trance, your physical sense is the next door neighbor to dream. The anointing comes upon you and it feels like sleep. Huh? No matter how determined you are to overcome that sleep, the sleep will overcome you. So I need to differentiate between a trance situation and a, a contention for the moment. Now when this grace comes upon you, it will blot out your physical senses. It means you will fall asleep for like Five minutes, five minutes, three minutes, three minutes and sometimes seconds. sometimes seconds. While you are in that state of sleep, you begin to see, receive the disclosures. So that's a trance. And then an open vision is the one I normally have. If we start praying now, my eyes will open. And I'll begin to see in the realm of the spirit. All right? So what she had was a trance. And the reason why we need to keep explaining it is because if these things are happening to you, you should know that it's from God. So that you can be confident in it, you can grow in it, and you can become established in it. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Uh, Mr. Adama, you see me at the end of the teaching. I've been looking for you. Yes, so she fell into a trance. And what did you see? So, while we were there, we were like, we in the room, we we're all in that room, and I don't know what happened. I just came out of the room. It was like, I just came out. And there was great war. So they were like, don't go out, don't go out. But I still went out. I don't know why, but I did nonetheless. So by the time I came out, there were this mighty army coming against me. I was the only one on the road, and the might, they were coming against me. So before I could know it, I, I turned, and there was one soldier. He was very tall. Okay. And all he could do was he just threw a stone to the army, and they all fell down. Now... Most of you have had encounters with angels before, but it's just that you were not told that those personalities are angels. 
Now, in, in, in encountering angels, most times, we encounter them first, initially, in your work with God. First, you encounter them in your dreams. So, that personality that she saw is an angel. Angels can come in different, um, different ways. What I want to tell you is this. Don't expect to see a wing. You know, in, in Sunday school, we were... Um, <laughs> hallelujah. In Sunday school, we were taught... Moses, are you... I heard you are not well. Ah, is the strength coming back? Or no strength? Okay. As we teach, as we preach, then the strength will begin to come back. All right? So just... God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so... Don't expect to see wings. There are some angels that have wings, but majority of the angels don't. All right? And um, most of the angels I've seen, I mean, in close range like this, I didn't see wings. But I know there are angels that have wings, but I've not seen those ones in close range. Hallelujah. I've seen them without wings, but they can fly. I've seen a cherubim before. The cherubim did not have wings, but the cherubim was suspended. There were 25 of them that visited me that day, 25 of them. And this was a special type of, of cherubims. Um, uh -huh. Doc, can you raise, raise your grandchild? That was how they were. 25 of them. 25 of them. We were in Jerusalem when I had that encounter. We were in Jerusalem when I had that encounter. I and Brother Bem, I don't know if he's here today. All right. He he's a very influential man. He made me a pastor for our pilgrimage. So I was pastoring 50 people. And because we we're pastors, we we're dignified people, they gave us VIP rooms. <laughs> so me and him had VIP room. And then, unfortunately for us, we traveled with the commissioner. Is this still a com commissioner? Okay, no, no, he it can't, it can't be a commissioner anymore. We traveled with one commissioner. Then when we got there, the guy now said he couldn't pair up with anybody in the room. And meanwhile, the idea is two in a room. Right? And if you want a room to yourself, there are extra charges you need to pay, which he did not pay. Meanwhile, he insisted that because he was a commissioner, he couldn't pair up with someone in the room. And the guy he was supposed to pair up with, we found out before the pilgrimage ended that that guy was related to him through his mother. So it was his brother. He disclosures, many revelations took place there. So we now said, all right, the guy that has been rejected, come, stay in our room. Take our bed. So I gave him my bed. Then I went to sleep on the rug. The rug is even better than the bed. Yeah, wonderful rug like this. And while I was trying to lay my head, something touched me. So I opened my eyes and then I saw 25 cherubims just floating in the room like that. And they did not have wings. I wanted to run out, but the way, the way to run out, there was one there. So, <laughs> so many times you first of all you start encountering angelic support angelic assistance you will see it clearly in your dreams there's a problem then you see an intervention an intervention that you did not apply for suddenly breaks out and it begins to influence the outcome of what you are seeing are you with me now, you will maintain that mode of civilization until a point in your life, if it pleases the law. And I need to emphasize it again. If it what? Pleases the law. Because somebody was saying that he wants to begin to pray to see angels. I didn't see that prayer point in the Bible. Do you need to see them before you know that they are at work? Okay, so, I mean, why we don't pray to angels? And some of them are very gorgeous when you see them. They're born like light. Some of them are gorgeous, very very beautiful, very strong, very powerful. Such that if they come into your space sometimes, 
you start feeling intense heat on your body. All right? They are, they are not to be worshipped. And we don't pray to them. We don't, we don't command them. They will not hear. They only respond to the voice commands of the Father. Do you understand? And some of them, even if you see them, your liver, your liver, your confidence, it will break. But first, you begin to see them in your dreams. They'll be assisting to give you an idea of the fact that there is a spiritual assistance has been designed to help you in the matters of life. Yes, go on. So why, and when he threw the stone at them, he just opened the wild gate and then he pushed me inside the gate and that was when I woke up. Your battle has not ended. You were just, uh, two things, your, your dream is, uh, is twofold. Your dream is revealing that you have angelic support. That is a good thing to know. And you have been kept in a shelter. You know the Bible says that the name of the Lord Jesus is, what, is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein and find safety. There are several times you don't even have enough strength to prosecute several battles around your life. And so God will keep you in the bunker. The bunker of his name. But he is, you are not supposed to build your flat in the bunker. He will put you in the bunker. You, he will revive, you restructure you. And then he will send you out again for battle. So that accommodation that you were brought into is temporary. Because you are still going to be released for... Don't take too much shelter in the bunker. Just take your breath. Take a deep breath. Take fresh air. Spiritual air. And bounce out again. Alright? So your, your dream gives you an insight into the protective facility that God has built around you. My father in the Lord always says that the distance between him and the devil is comfortable. You may sit. Yes, who is the third person? The distance. Can, we, can you preach to your neighbor? Say the distance between me and the devil is comfortable. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes? Uh, me, and my, me and my brother. Okay. We, is that your brother? Yes, sir. Okay, that, okay. We went back and we started praying around. Can you minutes. speak into the microphone? 10 minutes to 11. 10 minutes to 11. So we prayed to 9 minutes to 1. 9 minutes to so 1. So when we slept, I had a dream. I woke up around 5.18 after I had the dream. The dream was that I was in... Microphone on your... On your I mind. was in the church with other brethren. Okay. So they told the man of God, which I don't know the man of God, that another man of God told them that they are not going to heaven. So that they, before they will go, the gate will be closed. So they were arguing it. The man was trying to convince them that they would go to heaven. But they, according to what they had from the other man, they were convinced. So the argument was in process. So I came out. All right. I, so I think that's a doctrinal issue, just in case. We need to run a commentary on that. Hallelujah. Because there was a movement. There was a movement that came up. I think the movement was tagged holiness movement. And that... Um, uh, and then uh, someone died, went to hell, came back from... I be heaven or hell. I don't know where the person went or Hades or Tartarus or I don't know. But the person came out and came back with a prophecy to the church and requesting that every lady should strip her ears of earrings. And uh, um, there was a suggestive kind of dressing pattern that Christians, end time Christians, were supposed to uh, wear and all that stuff. Now, the first thing is this. Are you with me? I'm just building. The, our citizenship of heaven. Hmm? What made you a citizen of heaven is that Jesus died and you accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. Are you with me? In fact, the Bible reveals that none of us has the stature to do the kind of thing Jesus did. So it is God that did it through his son Jesus Christ so that no man will be able to boast. Are you with me? And the Bible also reveals that for all such who are um, recipients of salvation, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, as I'm talking to you now, he does, an imam tried to see if he could convert me to Islam. And uh, unfortunately for him, he made it public. That is, there were people, Muslims, sitting around listening to us. 
if it were only me and him, it would have been better. But there were people listening to us. And the people listening to he brought people yeah, yeah, listening to us. At the end of the sermon, some of the the listeners gave their life to Christ. Oh, him, him or oh, him, I, he, he, he did not convert him himself. But uh, and one of them that gave his life to okay, let me stop. Somebody will hear this sermon. I don't want to go into one of people gave their life to Christ. Just listen. But it didn't happen instantly. But the seed was sown. This woman that claimed to have gone to hell, there are two things about her revelation because we need to see the source of a revelation before we can know if it comes from God. These are the days where so many people claim to be prophets. So we need to check all things and stand with that which is good according to the scriptures. The first thing is this. Jesus himself in the book of, I guess it is Luke chapter 16. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus himself made us to understand that the way of the gospel does not allow that someone will come back from the dead to preach the gospel among the living. That Jesus said that. Because Jesus said that they have Moses and the, the prophets. That is Jesus that said that. Second point is this. If Jesus wanted us to have a very clear cut revelation of, of Hades, the other side of this realm, the waiting place. Okay, let us see. This is the organogram. This is the diagram, sorry. The architecture of the afterlife. Um, when a man dies, he does not go to heaven. Because when Jesus died, he did not go to heaven. Where did he go to? He went to paradise. Paradise, there's a place called Hades. It's a place of departed spirits. And if you are reading from the Old Testament, it's called Seol. It's a place of departed. A place of what? Departed spirits. Just like if you are in an airport and you have been checked in, there is a waiting lounge that you are going to wait so that your flight will come. Is that clear? All right. So there's a waiting lounge. That waiting lounge is called Hades or Seol. Hades or what? Seal. Now, in Hades, in Hades, there are two compartments according to the revelation Jesus gave us in the book of Luke chapter 16. One part of Hades is what we call Jehina in Greek language, and that's what we call hell in English language, Jehina. Now, for those of you that have gone to Israel, there is, behind Jerusalem, there is a place called Jehina. Jehina is the um, ancient the ancient times that developed a very wonderful city and if you still read read into the teachings of Moses, there were so many hygienic laws that Moses gave. Are you with me? And so they had a waste disposal system in Israel and all the waste that was generated was casted into Jehina and it was set ablaze. So in Jehina, there is consistent fire, all right, burning off what? The waste. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. So Jesus used that same word that, that in the afterlife there is a portion called Jehina. And the reason why he mentioned that was because there's going to be consistent fire. What is the fire doing? It's burning what? Waste. You get that? Did you get that? And then there is another part of, of of, of Hades, which we call Abraham's bosom. That part is for people that have covenant with God. And the covenant of God, because God is an eternal spirit, his covenant is not only as long as ye both shall live. His covenant is eternal in scope. And in fact, it's because God's covenants are eternal in scope. That's why he, the, the Jews call him El Elyon. El Elyon talks about a God whose participation with you is eternal in scope. If God slaps you, he slaps your generation eternally. That the slap will keep going for eternity. So everything that God... Are you with me? Oh, it's alright. May the Lord give you understanding. Anything he does has the touch of eternity. It is eternal. It lasts as long as he lives. So, Abraham's bosom happens to be a part of Hades that is given and lotted unto covenant people, people that have covenant with God. Their own accommodation in their afterlife is a clear cut. Is there's a clear cut difference between paradise and Jehina? 
paradise or Abraham's bosom. That's where we are going to be. Remember Jesus on the cross? Did you say remember? He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise is down. Paradise is not up. Did we get it to that point? Okay, next point is if God wanted us to have revelation of, of Jehin, of Hades, you know who would have written a book on it? Lazarus. Do you know Lazarus spent four days there? Lazarus would have come back and written a pamphlet for us. My experience where <laughs> you, you people are not following me. <laughs> Hallelujah. How come Lazarus came out and he was totally mute? Then let me take you to where I'm going. And where I'm going is in the book of uh, Second Corinthians. And let me show you why. When Lazarus came back, Lazarus said nothing. Alright? So, and then at the end of the teaching, I will show you that that woman's revelation did not come from God. Meanwhile, he affected the whole scope of the body of Christ. Brought fear on everybody. Some people went and shaved their hair. Alright, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 2 to 4. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God know it. Such an one caught up to the dead heaven. The dead heaven. Are you with me? I say are you with me? Alright so. And then in verse 3. We now have what and... I knew such a man. Are you with me? You are not following. You are missing something. First of all, Paul says that I knew, I knew a man either in this body or outside of this body. I cannot tell. That man was caught up to where? The third heaven. Full stop. Then he now said, and I knew that man. Now that word and there is called kahi. Kahi, when kahi in Greek is introduced. Are you, are you still with me? When kahi is introduced... It means that the subject I'm speaking on now is different from the one that I spoke on before. You get it? So this is a totally new, totally new experience he's trying to explain, which is different from the first experience that he had. So, are you here? It means that Paul was actually describing two experiences. One, third heaven. Two, let us see, to what what paradise and i knew such a man whether in this body or out of this body i cannot tell god know it how he was caught up into where paradise. where is paradise down where is heaven up now so this was the testimony of paul that revealed that paul saw the universe that's the entire universe he saw up he has been on the earth he went up and he went down. Listen. Are you, are you still following? Please don't be. Just follow me. Just follow me. Just follow me. Now, the Bible says, and he heard unspeakable words. Where did he hear the unspeakable words? Down. Such words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Let me stop there. Those, do you see why Lazarus did not come up with a pamphlet? Because all those guys that go down, the things that they hear, they are not lawful for men to utter on earth. And that's why God will not release somebody from the underworld to come back to earth to preach the gospel. Because the things you will hear there are not things that are lawful for men to utter. So that lady that claimed to went to, where did she go to? I don't know where she went to. And came back, said went to hell and came back. It's because people don't study the Bible. That's cheap, that's cheap, uh, cheap deception. Meanwhile, this was the message I preached here and it was captured on satellite. The people, we paid for only one exposure to play the, to air the message. The people loved the message. They started playing it, playing it, playing it, playing it, playing it. And as that message went, because somewhere, at the end of the message, I cursed that, that fake thing, fake prophecy. I cursed it. Do you know that those people fought me for two or three months? You can Three months. That's the part of the story I didn't tell you people. Three months. They rain curses. They say, you are cursed. Meanwhile, the Bible says that a curse that is costless, he shall not. So. But rather, the book I cursed stop selling. And the video. While you were busy shaving your hair, 
your money that you used to buy the book and the tape, they bought, they were buying Jeep in Abuja. You were shaving head. So it was their business that I fought. Our citizenship of heaven is by accepting Jesus Christ. That's it. We thank the Lord for sending Jesus. Alright? There's no other qualification that you have outside of that reality. And that's why everybody in the mosque, everybody bowing his head down in the Kaaba, just missed his way. Because the place to go is to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I don't have time to build that, but I just say, let me add it. Because I don't know, the preaching these days is, is quite terrible. So he was seeing that in his. I just wanted to cash in on that. But go on, brother. So, why they were still arguing? I came out of the church. So I don't know what happened, but I don't know how they started fighting. There was a woman that was inside with a child. So they stabbed the woman, and she was able to throw her baby outside. So outside was, of the church. Yes. Okay. So I was contemplating whether to carry the baby or to run. Then that's where I woke up. So some details of your dreams. We we'll still need the spirit of wisdom to help us disclose. But it has helped us talk about something we will not have talked about, which is this people going to hell and claiming. And you know what pains me? In all humility, what pains me is I expect that some of our fathers in the faith will stand up and say, See, we are hearing people preach this thing. Eh? Now, this is the position of the Bible about it. I waited for a long time, there was no response. So I said, All right. Uh, we have to step into the shoes of this, uh, this, this, this assignment. And that's where I started doing that job. And then a time came. What, so people began to talk about tight, tight, tight. And I was waiting for our fathers. All the things they said embarrassed the church. Hallelujah. So we had to step up also to speak about that. Many of you, how many of you read our piece on tight? Do you realize that after that piece went out, um, eight media houses copied it and pasted and in one month time the tight controversy ended you see when the truth comes first who dies a natural death yes you may sit you still need to go and pray on that to know what it means uh, I don't want to use my brain I will not be right yes finally sister Bumi then we'll continue with our bible study so when you you, you rise up in the spirit and you begin to contend then God now comes into the crucible and he begins to teach your hands to fight and he begins to teach your fingers to war. Never accept anything that God has not accepted in the word of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I slept by 10 in the night. All right. I was wondering if I would be able to wake up by 11. And then I asked the Lord to help me. And 11 on the dot... My eyes opened. When I checked my phone, it was 11.00. All right, let me run a commentary on that. If you start enjoying this grace, this grace of, Lord, I want to wake up by 12 to pray. Hmm? A day we come. God will be faithful to your prayer. And he will wake you up by 12. All right? But you will claim that you are so weak, even though you are already awake. You will claim that day that you are so weak that uh, the moment you violate that grace, it will stop. It might take you another five years to come there again. You know, I've told you something. I've told you something. Impartations, the impartations of God, they come in seed form. You are going to be the one to nurture it and to develop it by yielding to it but they come how in seed form don't kill the fragile things that God has put in your life that is intended to become a massive tree that will bring shade to many people I just wanted to run that commentary because how many of you have lost that grace in your life how many of you if you are sincere it will come back all right the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus amen yes sister so while I began praying the prayer point that dropped on my heart was Lord visit my foundation the foundation of my father's house while the prayer was on I slept off <laughs> and then I had a dream in that dream one of our ministers here name withheld 
he carried me in the car and took me to an environment. I don't know that place, but I had a knowing that this is my village. All right. And then I went to a compound, a very small compound, not too big. The houses there are, are old. And I saw elders. I saw some elderly men. They were seated. One particularly was standing. And then I woke up. I was like, God, what's the meaning of this dream? Then a dream I had a very long time ago, some years, the dream came to my heart suddenly. Okay. And in that dream, I saw a well. The well was deep. There was no water. I saw a serpent, a very long serpent. The head of that serpent was pinned to the ground, but it was still alive. And then I saw an altar. The, 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 the stones that was used to a build. The serpent that you Very big and long. Now let me say a few things. Um, you know, the Lord gave us enough clues in the Bible, actually. He gave us enough clues about what to expect when we deal with the devil. Most often, you are likely to see a serpent. Especially if that place is riverine. You are also likely to see a crocodile. Anybody seen a crocodile here? Raise the hand. Hi. Let me see your face. Ah, okay. You are likely to see a crocodile. These are the appearances of principalities. Alright? That those are the forms in which they take. If you are I don't want to mention states in Nigeria so that you don't get confused. But um, So the thing that they have covenant with, that's the thing you saw. And the fact that its head was pinned, it means that some warriors have been making attempts and this is how far they have gone. At least they have immobilized it to a level. They have limited, restricted it. But the work is not yet done. Right? See, God is so meticulous when he begins to give disclosures. What was her prayer? It, you pray that prayer with so much weakness. Yes, sir. However, it ascended into heaven. And then the next thing that came was a disclosure about the context of the warfare. Yes? Okay, and then... The, Meanwhile, the, the people you saw, that, those elders, that's the conclave, the people that are currently... You know, activating and sustaining the worship of that deity and the ones that you saw. There is a congregation. Hey. They are still keeping the principality alive, relevant to the family. Those are the people still keeping it relevant. They will claim that on your behalf they are praying. And when they go to sacrifice, they, they will mention your name. You, you left, you are not with them. You are a pastor, you are a priest, huh? you are a missionary. But in that place, they are still mentioning your name. As they are sacrificing, they say, this sacrifice that, then they will begin to mention all the people. Um, Bumi is bringing it to, Faith is bringing, this one is bringing, that one is bringing. So they mention your name. Hallelujah. Do you now see why scriptures in telling us about spiritual warfare, God decided to emphasize our protective armory. Because as long as those things go up, continue. And those things are transactions. Sometimes some of those demons that they are sending out because of the worship, they will still come and check you. You know, it's not the prince of this world cannot harm you every day. They will come and see if you have their products and their properties. If you have decided to subscribe to their ideologies, if there is a level playing field, the ground of compatibility, if they can come and check and say, uh -uh, no, this man is not compatible with us, and they will go for a season and still come back, as long as those prayers are still ongoing. Some of those prayers, are you with me, are designed, in some cases, they, I don't know, have another word. Will you permit me to use a good word for a bad distance? The grace 
Some of those prayers are releasing the grace for immorality. Hmm? As long as they are praying those prayers. And the reason why it is pouring out with the grace for immorality is that if you, it will be easy for you to sin. Very easy for you to sin. And when you enter into immorality, you will not be able to come out. And if you are pegged there, that the warfare on your life will go to another level. And the things you will miss will be so much that it will be very difficult for you to recover. Some of those prayers. That's what we call those. That's what we call the elders at the gate. The elders. These are the elders at the gate. The elders at the gate. In a typical Jewish society, the the gate is not an entrance. The purpose of the gate is not an entrance. The gate is uh, what we call. Are you with me? What we call the parliament today. The parliament. You know, the senate, the house of representative. That's what they call the gate. That's where the decisions about their civilization, the decisions about their customs, culture, that's where cases are judged. That's where decisions that determine the culture within defense is taken. So when Jesus was saying, are you with me? Upon this rock, I will build my church and what? And the gates. He wasn't talking about an entry point. He was talking about the authorities. Because it is at the gate that the authorities come to meet to take decisions. And if the authorities want to talk about an issue in your family, it will not be you that they will, they will call. They will call the elders. Eh? Are you with me? If they want to give a lady out for marriage, it is not the son that is in Harvard who is the last born because he's the most intelligent, the most exposed. The issue of that marriage doesn't concern that scholar. The person that will be consulted is what? Is the elders. So the elders are the ones that takes decisions about that authority that is conferred upon an elder. From whence he can take a decision that will be binding over a family. Are you with me? Is the function, is the operation of a gate according to the scripture. So we cannot talk about gates without talking about the authorities that makes, that take advantage of, of the statutory um, um, allocation of authority that is resident upon a man because of the principle of headship. I'm taking a lot of time to study thief civilization. <laughs> With due respect to all our thief brethren, what I discovered due respect. I hope I, I have clearance from uh, now. What I discovered in my research is that the, the Oya in the clan is actually the custodian of the secrets of the clan. He's the wizard of the clan. He's like a guardian of the clan. And that Oya is going to be present in the conclave of elders when they hold meetings in the night. That Oya must be there. If the Oya dies, they initiate another, the next eldest person into the community of the elders. That thing that they are doing is what the Bible calls the gate. Whether you like it or not, that conclave has authorities like a legislative house. How many of you, do you know that we are, as believers, if those senators go there and, and pass a bill and legalize homosexualism and gay, gay rights, give gay rights, we'll still be here as Christians, but the gates have already decided about it and you were not consulted and it's binding where you are dwelling. Do you understand that? That is the reason why we are doing what we are doing. I know it's quite intense when we, when we pray the way we pray. There are other things we can do. But the reason why we pray the way we pray is so that our authority level in the spirit can ascend. If your authority level in the spirit ascends, that gate, you are now the gate authority is not static. It's like recharge card. If you load, you, go, you have credit. You can load your recharge card in the spirit and then you will have so much. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what happened to me. Several people across the country decided to be loading my recharge card. So I, don't, I have not bought credit for five years. The last time I checked my account, it was one hundred and something thousand on, 
on MTM. How, how I wish I can withdraw that money. <laughs> I can talk for, for five days. I, I have more authority. The person that has 5,000 in his account, how many text messages can, can he send? Do you understand? Your, our authority level can grow such that if things will happen in your family, you are the one with the highest gradient of authority because you have your, your, your level of intercourse with the spirit realm is superior to the one the witches are doing. So it will be by you that a man will lift his hand. It will be by you that a man will rise. It will be by your, your instruction, by your, your decree. I've reached there in my family. There's no elder anywhere that does anything that works now. So they have stopped meeting. It doesn't work. Because the, the idea of eldership in the New Testament has nothing to do with age. The idea of eldership in the New Testament has everything to do with how many battles you have won. Don't. If you still have elders that manipulate you, it means that there's a height you are still yet to attain to. It was when I went to Bini and heard Idahosa story. That by the Holy Spirit, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, he went to the roundabout at ring, ring Road in the night. And God said he should take seven days fasting. First day he went there and he prayed. Second day he went there and he prayed. Third day he went there and he prayed. On the seventh day there was a mighty thunder and a lightning that struck the ground. That was the day he was coronated. His own priesthood became higher than that of the Oba of Benin. So if the Oba of Benin speaks and he comes and says, that thing, disregard it. Meanwhile, nobody could do that before that time. The Oba Bini was both a spiritual leader, he's both a spiritual leader and a political leader. He's a leader, he's the leader of the priesthood of the Bini people. And he's their king. So he has spiritual powers. There's one small thing that he comes out with. If he curses, when he comes out with that thing, he wants to curse. And when he curses, in two, three days' time, you begin to see the people that he caused die. But a man rose up, and his priesthood, the mysteries that he was operating with, exceeded that of wizards. So if wizard legislate, he will come and he will repeal it. Until it, become, it became obvious that he was the landlord of the territory. So we do what we do, so that we can rise higher than the gates of Hair, and then we now is the gates of light that determine the order of things. I went higher than the priests of my own land. Hallelujah! I went higher. The last time I went to preach back home, they flashed me, they tested me to see if my power was the way I was claiming it was. And with the flash, what happens that what was that we had an accident. But the accident, nobody died. Nobody. We brought the dented vehicle back home. But it was a sign that they did not have the power to do, to take life. So the next time I went there, I, I gave a decree before I went. That the, uh, the uh, people that are ready for battle, this one, this one will take blood. Nobody fought me. They, they, they didn't flash again. I said, this, this one, it will what? It will draw blood. Everybody went back. Now, so the idea is we the land must be controlled by the gates of light. That's why you are here. Sorry for taking your time. I'm just using the articles of your insights to, to bring some perspectives. Because these things are very practical. Many times we trivialize them. Yes? Amen. I, I, I also saw the, an altar and the, the stones that altar was made up of was um, bricks. They were scattered. I remembered also that I had, I prayed altar, when I had altar, that dream. I'm coming. Altar, altar, altar. What exactly is an altar? Because, you know, some of us that are New Testament theologians, many of us, say that the altar philosophy is an Old Testament concept. And it doesn't have any form of relevance in the, in the scheme of things in the New Testament. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Unfortunately, 
for such New Testament theologians, um, altars are valid things that the, that the scriptures recognize. Very valid. An altar is a... You know what it is. Let me know with your altar. Right. Amen. I remember I had... I, I prayed when I had that dream. I, I took a long time of prayers. And then I had the dream again. And this time around, I saw that water was gushing from the sides of the well. The water was not coming from under. It was from, the, from, side, from the side. And the water was very white. Okay, that's a new fountain. If, if you begin to see the new fountain breaking out, it means that there's new life. There's new life. Yeah, there's new life. It means the guys that have designed that the priesthood has created a pathway of new life. So the people that are born again in that family, they are relatively at peace. Because the priesthood have been able to generate new life. Hallelujah. And that, that stream, that fountain, it keeps springing up until it becomes a river. Yeah. It becomes a river. And that river, when that river begins to flow, anything that is dead that touches it, it comes back to life. That's the philosophy of the river of life that God says he wants to release upon the face of the earth. How I wish that the rivers in your belly will not just die in your belly, but they will come out of your belly and begin to influence the territory, begin to influ influence your family, begin to influence um, the landscape. Amen. At that point, my prayer changed. I began to pray for the men. I started hearing my ears pray for the men of the Atamonokai family. Now, let me, let, me, let me run a commentary on that. Um, you see, on the strength of the priesthood, priesthood, which can be demonic or divine, some priesthoods um, affect women most, especially if it's a priesthood of priestesses. What I mean by that is a priesthood that can only be inherited by a female. If, if that's what is running through your family. And in, in localities where the priesthood is an order of priestesses, these females have more authority than males. I don't want to go into this state, this kind of thing happens, so that if somebody from that state, somebody won't look at the person and say, you know, in church these days, there's suspicion, all kinds of things because we have not taken time to mature in God. If the order of the priesthood is an order of, of priestesses, then the impact of the presence of that altar will affect the ladies so much. For a lady from such a family to take in, eh? it requires warfare. Because you, it seems that you are, you are swimming against the tide. So it seems, initially. Until your authority begins to grow in the spirit and you begin to win authority by fighting battles. If you, if you decide not to fight battles, you will not win authority. And if you don't win authority you will not eventually become the elder of the clan. Alright? So, and in some cases, the males are implicated. So it's easier for the females to get by and then very difficult for the males to be able to keep afloat. The impact of priesthood can be read from genealogies and family trees and if you can read the family very well you will know where the impact is coming from in some in some uh, feminist priesthoods even for a lady to get married irrespective of her facial beauty her structure her look no see spiritual things they manipulate natural things you don't need to be the most beautiful lady to get married no you don't even need whether you think you are old, it is not an issue. If we deal 
with the resistances and the wars around you, you become the preferred in the eyes of the one that God will send. So if there is an emphasis to begin to pray for the males, then it means that there is something that has more implication on the males than the females. What did we say before we started? Do not accept anything in your life that is contrary to the position of what? Scripture. Yes, so when you began to pray for the males, yes, like in your own family, how many males are there? Among I, us? <laughs> the pictures of my uncles. Your uncles. Yes. And particularly my family. There's just one that is prospering. Just and that one didn't grow with them. Okay, he, he left. He, yes, he was taking... That one that is prospering, his wife, is he... No. Your tribe. No, she's not. I don't want to go into details. Um, <laughs> the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes, if God, sometimes, if God wants to break a chain, normally, what he does is that he does intertribal kind of mixes. Intertribal mixes. So for those of you that they insist that it must be an evil man you will bring, Many times, many times, not that. Okay, let me know. I don't. I don't know how to. Can Can I talk? Many times. I mean, while as I'm preaching, if I come and be pointing you, take note of the matter. Take note. Take note of the matter. Many times, those that thing of the 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 priesthood. And the causes that flow with it will be more effective if you marry from the village. And that's why there is this insistence. And you too, you need to insist. If God has spoken. Many times if he wants to undo several patterns. In a particular community where the priesthood is a priesthood of necromancy, they will never allow you to bury anybody outside of the village. If the person studied in Scotland and maybe lived all his life in Scotland, and the moment he dies, they will insist that you bring the cops back. Because the necromancer, the more cops around the altar of necromancy, the more potent the altar is. Oh, many of you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, we are used to this English church system where we wear ties and talk about, you know, breakthroughs. That kind of gospel is a blindfold. Because if you are not aware of what you are in, that's the easiest way to come under demonic manipulation. Ignorance. For those of you that happen to be from my state, that's what they do. All the altars there are with the graves of the dead. Uh, so, it's, it's about dead bodies. It's about death dates. All the death dates of all... Like, if a shrine is established, the grave of every priest in that shrine is in that place. And they don't bury people like this. They don't bury the priest like this. Eh? I don't know how to. I don't have a board. I would have drawn the shape of the grave. Because the grave, huh? the, the place the person the place the person lies down is like this, huh? then the grave is not like this. No. They will bore a hole here down. Are you with me? And so, um, as they are lowering that body of that, that is a mo. There is a man that has been blessed by the spirit, the spirits of the altar. The leg should not touch the ground. So, as the leg is coming, this man now will, we make sure he quacks the to now go under before. If the leg touches the ground, that guy will be buried with, the, with that man. That's how the altars of necromancy are fortified. So you can identify everybody's grave by that round place where they... So, all of their graves. So if you see 145 round things there, it means there have been 145 priests that stood on that altar. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. And when they begin to chase you, from the altar of necromancy, if you, there are only two ways to escape. Don't drink water and don't step on the ground. If you step on the ground barefooted or you drink water, 
you will fall. Have you gone to some places and then you heard somebody he matched something? Nothing is not physical. It's vibrations from the ground. So when you see someone that they fought with from an altar of necromancy and he's matching the ground and he's drinking water and nothing happens to him. It's because his priesthood, his authority is higher. And they will leave your side. They will leave your side and go far away. Your name will not be mentioned. That's where the new fountain begins to break up. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. I, I, all these terrible things I'm telling you, I'm telling you not so that you'll be afraid, but so that we can bring down every form of evil that has been built into our families. That's the philosophy of our Aleku. For, for those of you that are from the Dhamma speaking, um, Aleku is necromancy. A very strong follower of Aleku will put garnish his father's grave make it like a house because he will go and visit the grave in the day of war where are the Otupa people okay you are from up up Otupa these are the ones I'm talking about that your man doesn't he still visit his father's grave that your man uh, so his fence his father's grave his fence. So, in the days of war, he... <laughs> that's necromancy. They consult with the dead. So, these altars, you, you can decide to deny that they are not existing. That if any man is in Christ Jesus, it's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. Hallelujah. Your new nature has passed away. Your new life has passed away. You have a new life. You have a new nature. You are a citizen of a new country. You have a new priesthood. God never severs us from warfare because warfare is one of the important ingredients for our growth in the spirit. And God is concerned about our maturity. So balance your doctrine so that you know you prepare yourself for battle. I know we have a lot of lots of those faith preachers are here um, but over the years they have been converted the, when, when Ropo came he was, he was a faith preacher telling me about new creation I said, All right. <laughs> he doesn't know that I studied it more than him he doesn't know he doesn't know that I was Kenneth Hagen in my time I was Ken, I preached oh, oh. <laughs> it is recently that Benihin accepted that based on his work with God and experience in ministry, he has seen that a believer can be demonized. Recently, I knew that one long time ago. Long. It's recently that he was able to say it publicly. I mean, why many faith preachers were angry with him for making that truthful statement. It's as if the way doctrine is preached these days is not so that the truth can go out. But God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. So finally. lastly, while I was praying, I, I started calling their names, calling their names. And then I felt a strange presence mm. moving from my feet upward towards my head. Okay. And then I began to feel pain on my neck. Mm, that's what you, and then, you will feel something. Go on. And then I said, Jesus, Jesus. It left. You know what happened? Mm. On a wedding day, one man walked from the back of the auditorium, came to the front of the auditorium, and then pretended as if he wanted to greet my father in the Lord. And he shook him. When he shook him, he transmitted death to him. And death began to flow from his fingers. And when he got here, my father said, Stop there. The thing now stop. Go back. When you have those pains, eh? Don't keep quiet. Talk to it. Death is an intelligent spiritual being. And speak to it like a person, not like a thing. Tell it to what? Stop. And you will be surprised. It will stop. And then give that death the command and the instruction for it to go where it needs to go and kill who it needs to kill. Hallelujah.
it's not been too long that I was commissioned as a law enforcement agent. So we sent things in Jesus' name. Okay, somebody says he has a question. How come the power or presence of God in paradise didn't stop the witch of Endor from invoking the spirit of the prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 28? Uh, you see, you were not reading. You were not reading the text. Don't see if you want to read the Bible don't just pick a verse and make a doctrine out of it you need to read the whole pro pro progression read six verses before that verse read six verses after that verse then you get the context and then you now find out that truth does not exist in the vacuum exactly now if you read first Samuel chapter 28 you are going to see that the witch of Endor operates with a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is a mimicking spirit. A familiar spirit is a spirit that can mimic voice, mimic appearance, mimic so, so much. They have been around for so long and they, are, they can mimic people. When you pass into Hades, nobody can bring you out of Hades. You can come out of a Hades. Those people that are saying Aleku, it's not the people that they are invoking, it's familiar spirits that are mimicking them. So nobody has ever come out of Hades. So don't think it was Samuel that was invoked. It was not Samuel that was invoked. The witch of Endor had a spirit of a familiar spirit working with her. In order for you to be a medium, a familiar spirit, you must be in romance with a familiar spirit. And the familiar spirit, like some people that don't know their ancestors, they will go to a particular masquerade. They say masquerade like that. When that masquerade comes and begins to dance, then they will now bring the person that wants to find out his ancestors to the 50th generation. Then the anointing comes upon the masquerade. Then you mention, 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 mention. And it keeps going like that. So they can use that thing. They will see you. They, they will blow, blow the bigu for the masquerade. They will dance, 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 and say, "This is Ogbe. This son of Ogbe, son of Ogbe, son of Ogbe, son of Ogbe, son of Ogbe." Then from Ogbe, they will now go. Hallelujah! I say Hallelujah. Amen. Only for, for a born again sister, they now call and say, "You come. I go. Let him read the masquerade." Oh, 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 oh. He couldn't. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> For the first time, the masculine could not read. But that was a great lesson. Hallelujah. So it's a familiar spirit that they use. It's not as if Samuel was brought from the grave. And the whole scripture, if you read the whole scripture, you are going to see it. Hallelujah. In some quarters among my people, because those my people believe that the people in the family that pass through the family that are dead are still members of the family i don't know about your own tribe but this is what they do now so if there is a quarrel in the family and people are fighting then they'll go and bring the priest the priest will come and invoke probably the spirit of my father according to them then the the spirit will begin to speak it is not it's not as if the spirit will possess somebody and speak to the person no the spirit will start speaking with the voice of my father Everybody in this place, this auditorium, will hear that voice. Anybody that knew him while he was alive will know that this is my father speaking. And then, when that spirit comes, the spirit will begin to settle the quarrel and say, Hey, Ima, why did you do this? Do you understand? The spirit will now come and settle quarrel, quarrel among people. It's not as if he possessed somebody. It will be speaking. It will be speaking. When all of them now accept and everything cools down, then they will now take the regalia of the masquerade. Eh? Do some things, do some things, do some things, do some things. And then the thing will go. It's not the person that came, it's a familiar spirit. 